to gain some intuition for what the Hilbert transform actually does, let's start with a very simple signal. Let's define a signal, let's call it x naught, and let's let it be a sinusoid oscillating at some frequency f naught. So we can write it like this, x naught is equal to, let's set it equal to two times the cosine of two pi times our frequency f naught times t, or let's call that two times the cosine of omega naught t. Where here we've simplified the notation by defining omega naught equal to two pi f naught. We're just doing that so we don't have to write two pi f naught over and over again. Now, if you've taken calculus, you'll know from Euler's formula that we can write x naught as equal to the sum of two complex exponentials, e to the i omega naught t plus e to the minus i omega naught t, where again, i is the square root of minus one. So what this expression tells us is that the real variable x naught possesses both a positive and negative frequency component. The frequency is omega naught and minus omega naught. So if we compute the spectrum of our signal x naught, it'll have two peaks. If you've completed the module on spectral analysis, then you'll know that for real signals, which include nearly all recordings of brain activity, the negative frequency component is redundant, and we usually ignore it. However, in this case, it's important to remember that this negative frequency component still exists. Now that we've set up this simple signal, let's return to our definition of the Hilbert transform. Now we said that by definition, the effect of the Hilbert transform is to induce a phase shift. We said that for positive frequencies, the phase shift is negative pi over two. Now it turns out we can produce this phase shift by multiplying the positive frequency part of the signal by minus i.